So this video is about earth rotation synthesis as applies to radio interferometers. Now earth rotation synthesis is actually a fairly straightforward idea. The idea is that relative to some actual sky out there that we're looking at, two antennas rotating on the earth have a separation that's time dependent. That means if you imagine yourself standing on one of these stars over here looking back at the earth and seeing two antennas on the earth and I've drawn them far apart in this picture but it doesn't matter how far apart they are as you watch them from the star and the earth rotates you'll see that relative to you if you were measuring the separation between those two antennas as an angle you would see that angle changing versus time and in fact even the direction of the separation may be changing slightly depending on where on the earth these antennas are relative to one another so that's the basic idea of earth rotation synthesis, and we'll just go into slightly more detail on that. So imagine we have a field out in a meadow somewhere, and we have a few antennas in, those, in that field. Now we know from previous lectures that those antennas sample the Fourier transform of the sky, called the UV plane. And for these two antennas on the top, they will sample something in, say, the strictly U direction, if I've defined this direction to be north. And then pairing this top left antenna with one down and to the right, we'll get a sample over here. Pairing the bottom one with the top right antenna, we get another sample over here. And as we've discussed, because we know the sky to be real valued, we get the Hermitian conjugate sample as well. Now instantaneously, relative to the direction that we're now looking down on this field, this is what our UV sampling looks like. However, if we imagine that this field is now attached to the Earth and is rotating by, then at some later point, relative to us here on the sky, that field will have rotated on the Earth and we'll be seeing it under a different projection. And that means that we'll see the antennas in that field with different separations. So now we might see that what was formerly a strictly east-west direction, the U direction, has rotated up to be offset from that. And what was now up and to the right between these two antennas down here is now almost straight up. And so adding in the Hermitian conjugate samples, we end up with a new sampling that is offset from our original sampling. Now one component we haven't talked about here is the component of the baseline that lies along the line of sight. That is, as we are on a star looking down on the Earth, looking down the barrel of this antenna array that's looking back at us, how much of these baselines is aligned along our line of sight? And the answer is, if we're looking straight flat down on a field, in this case, maybe zero. Uh, maybe there is no W component of these baselines. But certainly as the Earth is rotated, we're certainly going to see projections of these baselines along the line of sight. That is, the, the extra length of the antenna array that we're not seeing under the projected array has to go somewhere, and it's gone into the line of sight. But in principle, especially if you're not dealing with wide field arrays, you can remove that component of the baseline just by phasing it. And so essentially, you're just going to see relative for some patch on the sky the U and V components of those baselines which have changed versus time. And you can use that to your advantage because these are actually samples of different Fourier components of the same sky. So you can use earth rotation synthesis to pretend as if you had moved your antennas in the field and generate different UV samples. And that's basically the point of earth rotation synthesis. It's using the fact that the sky isn't changing on time scales of the Earth rotating and continuing to phase or point your antennas towards the same patch of sky in order to get more Fourier information from that which gives you better images of that sky. Now you can tell by how these samples in the UV plane have moved around that more or less a baseline in the UV plane under Earth rotation synthesis will follow an ellipse as the Earth rotates. And exactly the shape of these ellipses and where they are on the UV plane, some of them can be follow ellipses up here or down here. These shapes are determined by your actual antenna positions and orientations and the latitude uh, where you are on the Earth. So if you were sitting at the pole looking straight up, everything would, would go in a, a perfect circle around in the UV plane. But as you come down to different latitudes, for example on the equator, the north-south component of a baseline doesn't change. It's set to you centered at some V and it's only the U component that follows an ellipse around. 
And of course, the, the last part of that is that you will never get a full ellipse unless you're actually at a pole or observing some area that is going around the pole and never sets. In practice, you'll probably only get about half of that ellipse, if that, depending on where you are and how long the sky that you're looking at is actually above the horizon. So that's Earth Rotation Synthesis.